All right, hey guys, what's going on? So today we're going to be covering scattering amplitudes. Before we can, before we do this, just as a little bit of an introduction, this is where Feynman diagrams begin to start becoming relevant. What I want to do though is I want to talk about these scattering amplitudes, uh, the mathematics behind the scattering amplitude, sort of the back end mathematics, before we jump into the Feynman diagrams. Because what the Feynman diagrams are going to help us to do is they're going to help us to picture what's going on. And not only are they going to help us picture what's going on, they're going to provide a shortcut for all this mathematics. Um, but with that being said, let's get right into the topic. But before we get into the topic, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Let's get into it now. So we're covering scattering amplitudes, and we're going to do a first order, or a zeroth order approximation, actually. So this here is a zeroth order approximation. And I'll explain what exactly that means. So essentially what we're doing is we're starting off with two particles. We're going to call them pions. And this particle is traveling at k1, uh, momentum k1, and this particle here is traveling at momentum k2. All right, so you can imagine we have uh, our particles, they're traveling. This is our one traveling at k1. This is our particle traveling at k2. And these zeros indicate the type of particle, right? We're not really interested right now in these zeros. Something's going to happen. And you can see it, it looks like I'm drawing a Feynman diagram, but not. But we haven't really formally talked about them yet. Um, something happens. We don't know exactly how they interact, but what we can do is we can measure the outcome of the interaction, right? So we have this pion coming out with uh, with momentum k3, and we have a pion coming out with momentum k4. Now, what happens in this box, this black box, we can approximate, but and we're going to see how we do that. So we start off here. We're, so we're, we want to get an amplitude that's associated, like a number, an amplitude is like a number we can uh, associate with uh, this transition, right? A pion traveling at k1 and a pion traveling at k2. Uh, interacting, this is arrow represents an interaction and outcomes uh, two pions, both at k3 and k4 momentum. What we can do is we could say, well, we could take the inner product between those two states, the initial state. So I'll call this the initial state. And this is the final state. So the amplitude is essentially the inner product between the initial and the final state when we evolve them using this S operator, right? This S operator, if you recall, was sort of, uh, this was the, um, the uh, this is what we talked about in the Dyson series. When we needed a Hamiltonian operator that obeyed the rules of the Schrodinger equation. It, it, it was a time um, evolving operator and that time evolution had to obey the rules of the Schrodinger equation. That's ex essentially what we talked about in the Dyson series. And in order to have it obey the Schrodinger equation, um, we needed to do, uh, we did a, a Taylor a series approximation of that time evolution and we found out that we had to normal order that Taylor series of the interaction Hamiltonian so that everything worked out, right? And you can go back to the Dyson series to see how that all, to see how that all played out. But essentially what this, this S operator is, is it's the time evolution operator that obeys the rules of the Schrodinger equation. And it looked like this right here. And then we time evolve it so that we can make sure we're keeping everything uh, flowing with with time, essentially. We start at uh, the smaller time and we go to uh, a larger time. And so that's all this in here. The, this here is what S was, and this is what we talked about in the Dyson series. This is the Dyson series, essentially. So now, what we want to do is we want to factor everything out, right? So when we factor, so we have this first term here, we time order all right, so we have the inner product with no interaction, right? So we 
going from the initial state again. I'll write that down, the initial state to the final state. And we do the same thing here, right? See so the initial state and the final state. And so that is, so you, we could see fairly easily that we get from here to here just by foil, right? By foiling terms out. So what we do now is we say this term here is the zeroth degree, the zeroth order approximation to our amplitude, okay? And this guy here is the next degree approximation to the amplitude, and we're gonna call that A1. What we wanna do in this video is we're just gonna focus on A0. And then in the next video, we're gonna focus on A1, okay? So when we're looking at A0, we say again that the time ordering is equal to the normal ordering plus all the contractions, right? So let's go over the contractions. So the normal ordering looks like this. All the contractions. So what are all the possible contractions we can do? This is Wick's theorem again, right? So to go from here to here is Wick's theorem. Okay. Now, Wick's theorem says, again, Wick's theorem says that the contraction is the difference between the time ordering and the normal ordering. So we need it, but we need to contribute, we need all the contractions, all the possible contractions. So the first one is this one. Uh, the next one is this one, and the next one is this one. All right, so where we contract two Two, uh, two particles within the ket um, state, two particles within the bra state, or the, the, the bra and the ket, right? Bra and ket, but th this time in this case, we're contributing a particle in the bra state with a particle in the ket state. And then we do the same thing here, where we're contracting different, just different particles, or different particle states, essentially. So these two guys go to zero, right? So the normal ordering is always gonna to go to zero because we're saying, the normal ordering is always gonna to go to zero. That's why normal ordering was uh, import, important. Uh, the contraction between these two guys again is this is gonna to go to zero because as we've seen, you can go back to important, the video on, on important contractions that these guys will go to zero. So what we're left with is these two guys, right? So this guy here and this guy here. That's what, so I've rewritten those. So let's see what these guys are, right? So this one here is this guy right here. So how do I get this? So K1 and K4, right? So here's K1 and K4, K1 and K4. So, and then we have this normal this normalized term out here. And so this is one of the important contractions that we went over. Uh, two particles in two different states, in, in a bra state and a ket state, and we do the same thing, bra state and a ket state, for this one here. Same thing for the next term, is we get something like this, okay? So let's try to compress all this down, right? So when we compress all this down, we have these two, so all this stays, that's all this stays. And this guy here stays, this guy here stays. We're changing, so we could see K1 and K4. Well, the only reason we're doing that is because this is gonna only be one if we transform, if, if both of them are the same, right? So if both of them are the same, then we have to change one of them I'm changing K1 here to K4, okay? Same thing goes for this term here, which is what we see here. And the same thing goes for the other two terms, which is what we see right here, okay? Well, square root of this times square root of the same thing is just um, that. Same thing here goes right here, okay? And then we have this two to the sixth term 
The same thing goes for this term right here, which comes from these two guys right here. Okay. Let's see. So now, so, so we have these two terms, right? So the things are getting pretty uh, dense pretty quick. So we're left with two, right? So we have, we're factoring a two. So we have two times two, two times two, and then we have this two to the six, right? So two times two and two to the six. Okay. What does this all, what does this all mean, right? So we're factoring, uh, there's two of these terms essentially. So this plus, you can see they're the same thing. That's why we put a two out here, right? And everything else stays the same, right? So what does this mean? So we get uh, two times two times two, right? So that's going to be two, four, uh, two times two is four times two is going to be eight, not six. So that should be eight. Oop. There we go. Eight, and then we have our omega terms right here. These are the two final state uh, temporal uh, components of our four momentum, of our four momentum, and then we get this term right here. And that's essentially the that's essentially the first order term in. Um, in our approximation. It's not a great approximation because it's only the zero third order term. I said first, it's a zero order approximation. It's just the, the inner product between the initial state and the final state. All right. So what does this all, what does this all mean? This means that this, so we've calculated a, we've calculated a, ter a term that's associated with this zero order, this zeroth order approximation. In the next video, we're going to focus on this guy, okay? And we're going to see how um, how we're going to how we're going to calculate this, and then we're going to move on to Feynman diagrams. So that's all I got for this video. If you guys like this kind of content, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next one.